G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an anti-armor leave reaction rifle with bullets exploding for area damage as a secondary legendary effect. This is one of the more requested weapons that I've had recently, and I've finally found one of these bad boys, so yeah, we finally get to do it. At least one of the audience will be happy to see this finally. Anyways, 112 damage with the hardened receiver. That's the same damage as you'd get out of a prime receiver, so the only thing we're missing out on is bonus damage against Scorch, which won't be a problem, to be honest. These things hit quite hard enough, but the anti-armor legendary effect on lever guns is actually quite good, because as you can tell with the attachment lineup here, there's no magazine size thing, so you can't actually give it a little bit of armor penetration by chucking in a stinging mag or perforating mag if this thing was run on mag, but no, you just stuff bullets in the tube, so having that extra anti-armor helps this thing's damage out quite a bit when compared to a standard one where you'd normally be hitting up against the multitude or just the high numbers of damage resistance and it will cut down your um, damage quite a bit so it's good and I've also got the bullets exploding for extra damage and that'll punch the armor slightly too it, it's not really that noticeable but yeah it's there explosive guns are fun sure we've got a true barrel for um, hip fire accuracy and a line stock for the same thing but just to a lesser extent than a true one but the main reason I put that there is because it's got the bullets on along the side there which um, are bigger than the bullets this thing actually fires it fires the 45s which I mean, you load these things, which are 4570s, but it's still 45, so, yeah, p perhaps unbalanced, because that is a plentiful ammo thing right there. You can keep lever guns running for a long time. But anyways, another reason why I put the align thing on there is to cover up the scout insignia thing, so we don't get the embarrassment of being associated with the scouts, but unfortunately, there's one on that side, so... Anyone who's caught uh, snickering at me will be shot in the face, so I don't think we'll have any witnesses to uh, report that Winter is associated with the Scouts, which is good. I've also got a short scope. I'm going to be using this with Chameleon, so having my reflex sight completely taken out of the picture when I crouch is not a good thing. So a scope is there just so we can actually aim accurately, and a suppressor is there for stealth purposes. And I've given you plenty of time to look at the uh, copper-coloured... Uh, Pioneer Scout. So let's increase this thing's damage. Obviously Tank Killer will synergize well with Anti-Armor to give me even more of a passing through armor when I shoot things, which is good. All of those tanky enemies will be dropped in one shot anyway, despite this thing not having too much armor penetration normally. But you know, it helps out to punch through armor. Perhaps some of the things that are more tougher than your regular things like maybe Swan or the Milet Queen will have a little bit more trouble. And there's Quick Hands. I don't think that works there, so I'll just chuck on Critical Savvy instead. And we're now doing 226, and that is without Adrenal Reaction or Adrenaline to boost that. But we're going a full health approach this time, so that'll be that until we actually take some damage and get some kills. Okay, so here we are at Green People Bad, and my buffs are these... All chameleon stuff. All of this is um, extra AP except for that one. That one's extra agility, which is, is helpful. Um, not too much to tell. Let's get started on these guys, shall we? Can't exactly one-shot super mutants if we hit him in the torso, so aiming high will probably do us well. And Okay, I don't know why I missed then, but trading our aim a little bit will be good with this. I haven't actually played all that much. And by the way, um, if you, if you feel like that I sound different, it's because I'm sick. So I think Sinister Hand said, is that a new mic, bro? No, my voice is just fucked because I'm coughing like some sort of General Grievous cosplayer all the time. It's not pleasant. I've actually had some sort of head cold over the past couple of days. And let me tell you something, working six days a week is uh, not helping me with my recovery. I don't get a lot of time to rest these days, but you know what they say, ain't no rest for the wicked. Haven't been detected just yet. Uh, these super mutants have nailed a, a sneaky little shot um, in caution there, but I'm I'm seeing a 3.5 times multiply there, so you know what, I'm going to boost that to even further. So for those of you who don't know this, if you chuck on... Uh, what's it called? Mr. Sandman first, you can go back and chuck on COVID Operative, you get a good multiplier, you will see that in just a second. And here we go. Yay, 3.75 times, and what am I reading from that 691 damage? Can we one shot a Warlord in the torso? Yes, we can. Excellent, that's what we want to see. Because sometimes hitting the head is bad, it's, it's a little bit difficult if you've got an aim like me and haven't been playing nuclear winter to 
make your aim better. This is kind of, I've just turned the computer on and I'm, I'm kind of going, but hopefully it's not too bad. All right, I'm going to have a drink because my meter is low and I'll see you inside. Okay, we're on the inside now, and thanks to private servers, I know that we're full of super mutants to kill here. We have lost our adrenaline, however, so uh, we'll just aim high for now, even though one or two ranks of adrenaline should get us over the line. And whilst I'm here, I've got critical savvy, I might as well use bats a little bit. If I can't aim on my own, I just let the game aim for me, eh? How do you like that, doggo? Okay, that was a blatant miss for a shot that I shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, sometimes that's is inconsistent, so regular aiming is a little bit better sometimes. We are in danger, not for long. Come on, escape artist, do your thing. Do stuff. Sometimes it just doesn't work. These, uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, despite being around the corner, I go to play, I go to where I'm in plain sight crouch, then I'm in caution, because... That makes sense, and look how little damage I'm doing with the explosions if I bounce splash damage, and that's the real factor of why everyone thinks explosive is crap. It's, it's not crap, it actually gives you a shitload of damage, you just still have to be accurate with it. There's very little utility into spamming splash damage, and there, right there was all of the chameleon armors doing the trick. He saw me, he shot at me once, and then he completely lost sight of me. That doesn't speak much to the intelligence of the green skins, but still, it makes Winter look even more stealthy than she actually is. That is premium script wear right there. That is almost insulting to see that one drop, but I'm not going to discriminate on the old 40 script drops. I'm always happy to see that rather than a three-star drop and a one-star thing. And once again, when I'm actually recording weapon videos, I'll see plenty of legendary drops. I already killed these two, didn't I? But as soon as I start live streaming farming for shit, I won't see legendaries for 15 fucking minutes apart, which is annoying. So, if you could make it a little bit more consistent, Todd Howard, that would be good. People have been raging at Todd Howard recently. I saw this meme, it was about, it was like the Outer Worlds dialogue thing, and then there was a picture of Todd Howard, and there was, yeah, it's, it's funny. Speaking of Outer Worlds, you're probably wondering if I'll ever make content on it, and... Um, right now is no. I don't actually find the gunplay all that fun or enjoyable. There's not really much to do with builds that I can see really working. I don't know. It's just... Maybe it's not for me. I'm more about running around shooting cunts than running around talking to cunts. I don't know. It's just... I, I don't know. The, the story kind of failed to engage me. I, I didn't end up caring for a lot of the NPCs that are in the game. Or caring for why they were there. Maybe that's just me being a psychopath, but, um, yeah. I, I didn't, it didn't really grab me. It didn't really grab me, to be honest. But I'll, I'll see if I... Maybe I'll like it after I'm finished with my first playthrough. But honestly, I like Fallout 76 better. Now, that's going to be super controversial, because the narrative right now is... Fallout 76 is bad, Outer Worlds good. Well, let me tell you something. Fallout 76 is so much fucking better when I'm playing it... And I'm on my private server, I don't have to worry about people coming in and, you know, messing around spawns with me. Oh man, I said something positive about Fallout first. In come the fucking hate, the hate people. Um, that's okay, just parrot back whatever those hate mongers on YouTube said, oh, not hate mongers, um, outrage mongers said on YouTube and then collect your likes and, you know, uh, whatever helps you sleep better at night, but fucking hell, I love private servers. I've got a, I've, I think I've got a pretty good deal out of this Fallout First subscription, man. The, the value in it is very high, and it's not for everyone, alright? I, I don't recommend everyone get this, but for content creators like me, that's a fucking cringy saying, isn't it, content creators? For people like me, this thing's a fucking godsend, because... How long has it been since I've raged about spawns being fucked, goo piles everywhere, or other bullshit happening in the server? It's been ages, and Fallout 76 is so much more enjoyable now. Fucking sue me! Oh yeah, and for those of you that, um, would accuse me of being on Bethesda's payroll for, uh, you know, speaking positively about it, I would like you to, um, take that opinion, write it down on a piece of paper, Fold it up as many times as you can, 
and then gently insert it into your ass. I'm not on anyone's fucking payroll. I bought the subscription to myself. I'm subscribed for the next 12 months, and apparently there's more features coming too, so... <laughs> I don't I mean, I'm getting a good deal here. If I, if I've already paid for all this shit and get all of the money back plus more on Adams, well, if they're just going to add more shit, well, fuck me. It's it, the the deal is getting better. Now that is going to be fucking controversial. I can't wait to read the fucking hate comments in this one. This is going to be good. I love stirring the pot. Anyway, so I'm I'm using this thing in vats right now and Getting the cheap criticals is nice, um, having them regenerate about 50% quicker is also good. I'm over capacity right now because I've, um, okay. That's the, uh, beauty of having serendipity sometimes. I get, I get a bit careless. I think it was the fucking tin cans that sent me over capacity. Okay, well, I'm in an event right now because this event is still on, so we get to kill a scorpion, too. And we get a Assassin's Cultist Dagger. No thank you, but at least in the meantime we can... Oh, that's another Death Skull. You can die. Alright, let's fucking drink this shit. Okay, I've dropped the tin cans down there, and since I'm on a private server, no one is just gonna rock up and pinch that, so <laughs> there's another benefit right there. Not the ones I'll tell you about though, but if you watch a video and it's compiling the extra advantages of a private server that Bethesda didn't really talk to you about, be sure to accuse them of being paid by Bethesda because they can't say anything good about it. Okay, obviously I'm... I'm wow, I failed the event. I'm a scrub. Um, yeah, that that's going back to um, people accusing it of survivalists of... Uh, covering some of the features that weren't immediately apparent that Bethesda didn't talk about and apparently she was endorsing it even though she said it wasn't an opinion video and that was like wow what is wrong with you people that was really close to me dying and I'm probably about to die but still um I think I'm just about done here actually there wouldn't be too many ghouls after that yet would there didn't feel like I killed a whole lot, but yeah, in crowd control situations, it ain't going to be good unless you can sneak all the time, and sneaking is a lot easier when you're not over capacity, so you know, as soon as we got rid of that bullshit, we were able to kill these guys easily enough. That's just sloppy um, on my part. Righto, there's Swan over there, and he's kind of just teleported into his sleeping position, but uh, we'll make him sleep for a little bit longer than he was supposed to. Unfortunately, not getting the headshots there, and we might be out of range slightly because that was probably not as much damage as I was expecting. Well, actually, 900. Yeah, that seems about right. If you look at it this way, and that, um, does it make a lot of sense for Bethesda to release all of these, um, really advantageous features behind a paywall? Obviously, they're low on funds. That something, something happened at Bethesda. Maybe they didn't get their they didn't have their shit ready in time for Wastelanders, and they need more time and more funding to, you know, push that out. And obviously, they've just thrown up of a quick solution. Maybe it was a little bit too quick, but basically, um, there's a subscription service. We all know about that. And you can get it, and you just you gotta pay them a little bit. And if, if that's a thing that's uh, keeping Wastelanders around, keeping Fallout 6, uh, 76 alive, then honestly... That's a sacrifice I'm willing to make sure. Plus, all of these gameplay bonuses are help too. But you know, to keep this thing alive, I mean, is the survival of this game not worth a, a few dollars here and there? I don't really know. Perhaps for some people who are actually into this franchise and only talk about it when they have some sort of controversy to um get a lot of ad revenue clicks. Maybe you wouldn't accept that, but I reckon that's a good thing. I quite like Fallout 76. There's another controversial statement right there. However, let's not get things twisted here. I ain't no fanboy. I've criticized Bethesda harshly for a lot of the things that they've done um, in terms of just general patch design. The fucking... I mean, they, they don't do ha they don't do anything about the blatant fucking hacker epidemic on fucking nuclear winter. That that's annoying. 
some of the weapon stuff that I could feel that I feel like I could easily fix within like five minutes in the Fallout 4 creation kit. And I imagine these games in the creation kit are very fucking similar. I feel like I can go ahead and fix that kind of stuff for take me five minutes. And there are there are many many patches into this game, and that stuff hasn't been addressed. I'm not really sure if they're not getting enough feedback from players that it's not done, or they just fucking avoid my channel at all costs, and you know. They don't know that these things are broken because most people just kind of accept things for what they are But I notice these things I notice these weird little things like the light barrel on the submachine gun making the thing heavier There's a whole bunch of shit and weapon performance still needs to be tweaked I reckon because at this point there's only a couple of weapons completely worth using But as an online service where the game constantly changes and evolves there's no excuse to leave a piece of shit weapon like, I don't know, an auto grenade launcher or broadside are just left in the dust when it's content that the players could be actually using and, um, ac and uh, you know, using, I guess, is the only word, or you know, experiencing when they're actually good. And all you need to do is change a few numbers, maybe prioritize different, I don't fucking know, but there's a lot of shit that needs to be fixed, alright? That's the main takeaway. But enough about that, let's circle back to the weapon's actual performance, shall we? And it has been good. You really can't go wrong with a anti-armor legendary weapon if you're using it properly, but... Okay, you just open the door, mate. There you go. Um, yeah, you really can't go wrong with any sort of suppressed lever action rifle if you've got a build set up specifically for doing the sneak criticals and everything like that. So, yeah, it's been a, a very powerful weapon to use. Um, and we've shot more than just three ghouls with it, so, you know, we can actually say that and you can notice that just by me showing you through gameplay, so, yeah, it's, and despite it not being as powerful as, say, a bloodied, it can still one-shot Super Mutant Warlords, which is, you know, more than what you need, or rather on par with what you need, because, well, you kind of want to be one-shotting those guys, but... You know, a lot of weapons still can't do that, so that's pretty good. I had, um, I had hard time making that happen with a grenade launcher, of all things, so, there. So, we're still in caution at this point. He's got a couple of, um, little bursts on us, and he's going to land, isn't he? No, he's not. Oh, there we go. That's what Obi-Wan would call uh, another happy landing. And the uh, Scorch Beast response here has been quite underwhelming. I'm not sure if they... They probably spawn their dudes when they actually see you, but I'm just killing them and staying sneaky enough. Obviously, being in the dark is helping, but all of my chameleon armor in the way it stacks. Ah, here's the Scorch army. Army or not, you must realize you are doomed. And despite this being a rifle with a scope on it, she's actually rather um, good on the AP usage, to be honest. So that's a definite plus too. If you don't feel like aiming with this thing and you've got a build set up for using more criticals than what you'd regular do or just in general, then, you know, you can actually get away with this thing in VATS quite easily. It's definitely one of the uh, best weapons in the game. I think the only thing that holds it back, or a couple of things, obviously the ammo capacity, le alleviated with um, the quad legendary effect, but also the uh, lack of armor penetration on stock parts and stock legendary or no legendary. Um, that's kind of the limitations of it, but you can get around those things with the specific legendaries, and you don't need a whole lot of bullets in your magazine if you're one-shotting everything. Taking five enemies with one full reload is actually quite good, but I think you get the point of this weapon. Anti-armor explosive lever gun. It's pretty damn good. If you want one, I don't know, contact me. Um, trade only, give me something cool to show off. It doesn't have to be a god tier, just something interesting if you want. I'm kind of full on caps too, so I'm not interested in your money. Alright, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching, guys. Also, this was uh, the gladiator costume. That's what it looks like. People said it's unimmersive, but it was released during Halloween, so, you know, it's supposed to be a costume, I guess. I don't fucking know.